Uh, what's outrageous for Manly fans is the fact that Tommy T had to end the session early, head in hands, goes for scans. When you want to find out the extent of injuries, you go to Brian Seen. He's the NRL uh, physio across social media. He's good enough to join us on the line. G'day, Brian. Morning, guys. All right. What information can you tell us, uh, the latest, and, and your thoughts on the latest reports coming out is that it's not too serious for Tommy T. Yeah, I think when the reports came out that he did it sort of not running at full pace, that's always a good sign. Uh, generally, the more severe hamstring injuries you're going to look at, like, you know, top end sprinting, heaps of lo- like heaps of speed, heaps of explosiveness through that muscle. So the fact that he's just pulled up sort of at a, a by all accounts, a slight jog, probably says to me that, you know, he's pretty hesitant with his hammies at the best of times considering his history. So he might have just felt like a bit of a twinge and gone, no, oh, no, I don't want to keep going. Um, so hopefully he's just, I guess, being more cautious and a bit more, you know, feeling it a bit more than you or I would if we had a twinge in our hammy just because he's a bit sensitive with that history. Uh, but it's still not a good sign. Uh, you know, it's been almost two years now since his last hamstring injury, which is a positive thing. But, uh, yeah, you, you Definitely, if you're a Manly fan, you were hoping that he was on the other side of them. Can you get your hamstrings to a point when you've had a few injuries? Can you get them to a point where you're just as good as new or you're always going to have problems with them? No, unfortunately, you're pretty, and that's true with pretty much any injury, right? The biggest predictor of future injury is injury in the same area in the past. Mm. So any player who suffers an injury in any area is more likely to suffer that same injury again moving forward. And that's particularly true with the hamstrings. The hamstrings have the highest recurrence rate in sport. Oh. It usually sits somewhere around 20 to 30%. Um, so that that's true for every player in the NRL who suffered a hamstring injury in the past, they are more likely to suffer a hamstring injury than a player who hasn't suffered one. Uh, so you can't quite get it, you know, to 100%, but you can get it to a point where, you, you know, you, you're as, you know, as close to 100% as possible, which is what most of them try and aim for. Brian, what are the implications around, he's now had a fifth hamstring injury. The first three were on the left. The second two were on the right. Does that, do we balance it up with another one on the right later on? <laughs> like, how does that play out? Yeah, you certainly hope not. Uh, no. I think the most disappointing thing with the with the right going again is that you'd almost, I, I guess, consider it his good hamstring. Yeah. Uh, the left is the one that's kind of, you know, caused him all those problems. They were the ones that he suffered sort of in the games and he kept doing again and again. Whereas the right... It, like you call it a freak occurrence in that whether it happened on the corso or whether it happened slipping in the bathroom, mm. that is a bit of a, you know, it's not something that you would uh, can, like see an athlete doing every week, right? You, it's not something that you would go, oh yeah, he's more prone to that because he does that action every week. So you sort of would have thought, oh, the right might be a bit of a fluke and hopefully he's on top of that. So the fact that it is the right again, um, you know, is uh, like, I don't know in, in Tom's mind whether that's a little bit more disappointing that it was his good hammy that went. Uh, but it'll just be interesting, I think, moving forward. Now there's a new sort of coaching staff there and performance staff with Anthony Seabold coming in and stuff like that for his hamstring to go, not go for two years and then to go sort of within, you know, the first couple of weeks of that new staff coming on board, that's going to be uh, fairly challenging for those guys to sort of come on, you know, come around with a plan moving forward. Mm. We were talking about Pat Cummins before and how he was very injury riddled in his early career and then kind of matured out of it. Is Tommy at the age where he can still, his body can mature a bit and not get as injured as even with his shoulder uh, and that kind of thing? Or is he kind of at the age now where that won't happen? No, I think I think any player, and I get the like the overreaction every time this kind of stuff happens. I mean, my uh, direct messages yesterday was full of people saying, you know, asking if he should retire and all this yeah. kind of stuff. And none of these injuries are, you know, like death knell injuries. They're, they're not ones that you need to look at and go, oh, he's, you know, he he's going to be injured for the rest of his career. A really good example is James Tedesco. He started off really young and had, you know, multiple knee, ankle, you know, issues and stuff like True. that. And he's gotten to a point where he's he's getting over it. So, you know, and, you know, for every 
for every player who, and I mean, even Matt Moylan, like Matt Moylan's someone who struggled with hamstrings for years, you know, yep. and, and soft tissue injuries in his lower limbs and stuff like that. Whereas last year, you know, came out and by all accounts, you know, put in his, his best sort of training year and surprise, surprise, no hamstring injuries, right? So it's it's these kind of injuries are things that can be got on top of. I think the, that like, while it's disappointing, it is the fifth one. I think everybody needs to remember that it's been two years since he suffered a hamstring injury, you know, two years. I know he hasn't been present because of the shoulder injuries and stuff like that, but they're not related to the hamstrings. They're completely separate footballing injuries that could happen to anyone. So I, I think with Tommy, it's hard because he hasn't been available for a lot of the last couple of years, even though it hasn't been because of the hamstring. But it's certainly not something that I, you know, as a physio from the outside looking in, is freaking out about in the long term. Mm. I think with the Matty Moylan one, that's because he signed a one-year deal. So he... <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. The hamstrings magically. Y- exactly. yeah, yeah. I'm joking. Stop oh, looking at me like that, J.A. Sometimes um, it's just too far. <laughs> hey, Brian, I want to ask you, I remember back in the 90s, um, a couple of Illawarra players. No, that's right. Neither <laughs> does Alex. And you probably don't even, Brian. Um, uh, a couple of Illawarra players underwent some radical surgery with their, they had consistent hamstring injuries. Ian Russell and Rod Wishart, and they, they went under anesthetic and they had their hamstrings lengthened because Ooh. they had consistent. Yep. Is, is, that, is that still in practice now? Uh, mainly for groins. So right. don't do it for hammies. Uh, there's a reason that it happened back in the 90s and doesn't still happen today with hammies because, yeah, it doesn't um, it doesn't have a great result. But they can still do it for, like, chronic groin issues. So right. they'll release the groin to kind of loosen mm-hmm. that up. But it just doesn't. Yeah, it just doesn't work all that well for hammies. Uh, now, the other question I wanted to ask you, um, uh, J.A. mentioned Pat Cummins. And what, what would have happened there would have been a modification of his bowling action to put less yep. stress on certain parts of his body. Yep. I know Ruben mm-hmm. Rizika was the sprint coach who was working with Tom Trebojevic. He's now gone over to the Bulldogs. I just wonder, is there anything Tom can do to a change a running style that might make it uh, less prone to injury for him? Well, that's exactly what he was doing. I had him on my podcast last year talking about what he was sort of working around to get um, to a point where he wasn't going to keep doing it again. And, he was working on his stepping technique because he was actually doing it apart from the right, which, as we said, was, uh, you know, external circumstances out our way from the football field. But the other way that he was doing it was stepping off his left foot, which isn't a usual way to suffer a hamstring injury. It's usually sort of running in a straight line. Mm. So stepping off that left foot, he was working on specific technique stuff, uh, stepping off that left foot to try and reduce the load on the hamstring and, and get him through that. So once again, as you know, I talk, spoke about earlier and you've just touched on there, that, that changing of the guard with the, the training staff, I just hope they haven't sort of gone away from any of that stuff um, because, yeah, it's, uh, yeah that, that's going to be really important for him moving forward. Oh, yeah. Okay. Hey, Brian, great to chat, mate. It's a funny it's one so from interesting. NRL Roast on your Twitter feed about uh, how many, <laughs> how many uh, direct messages you got uh, following Tom's injury. Just out of interest, we were talking about, is he a million-dollar player? Like is is he is there a club? I know you're a Dolphins fan, Brian. Does oh, Wayne yeah, does mate. Wayne I, pay one point one for Tommy T? I had this discussion with my old man yesterday, and like uh, like if he was on the market for a million bucks, the hamstring like the injury issues wouldn't shy me away from him. And the upside's too great. Mate, the Dolphins um, and the would injury. take Jimmy at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, yeah, I, like, they'd probably take me at a million. Bucks point of time but um yeah no like it, it, anyone any club out there who needs a fullback potentially um yeah, yeah the, the injury issues aren't the aren't the type that i look at and go oh yeah you couldn't you know you couldn't pay that money for him you, you you'd if you're a performance staff at a club you yes. go yep i think i can get on top of this and we're going to get a bargain um and a great player so no i agree yeah oh jimmy's just you should see him just <laughs> prancing around the oh, studio oh, i totally agree with you on that one brian uh, and the good thing about me signing for the dolphins is i would actually lower the average age of the squad so that's, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on, Brian. We're joking. We're joking about that. Uh, thank you very much, mate. Appreciate it. Uh, have a great day. No worries, guys. You too. Uh, Brian Seney there, the NRL physio.